है फ्रेंड्स मालविया मिशन टीचर्स ट्रेनिंग सेंटर इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ट्राइबल यूनिवर्सिटी अमरकंटक ऑर्गेनाइज्ड अ रिफ्रेशर कोर्स इन मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी रिसर्च फ्रॉम मार्च 15 टू 30th 2024 टीचर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस हायर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस ऑफ द नेशन पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द प्रोग्राम प्रोफेसर मुश्ताक अहमद पटेल was invited to deliver a talk during this program the presenter used canva presentation slides for the lecture with oral interaction to enhance interactivity this video presents the live recording of the lecture it will be useful for teachers of higher educational institutions and research scholars so let us jump directly into the lecture where professor mtv nagaraju director mmttc and dean education igntu is introducing the speaker welcome once again uh, sir has uh, did his uh, phd and everything is from gulbarga uh, university gulbarga and uh, he worked some time at gulbarga and joined later on joined as a teacher in uh, maulana azad national urdu university uh, hyderabad uh, after elevation of uh, professorship he went for the central university of karnataka as a register and worked there uh, 3 years then again he came back to the uh, pavilion to maulana azad national urdu university right now he is associating with the right of distance education as uh, sir has uh, a number of experiences and uh, published a number of papers in national international journals uh, uh, sir is now looking after the Indian Distance Educational Association, IDEA, that is called. It is a very prominent association in the arena of distance education. Even he is conducting every month one program under the IDEA, inviting a great personality who has worked and who served his contribution towards the development of distance education through like webinars, webinars, even uh, on the education day of the last year uh, november 11th i invite him as a speaker on the <coughs> proposal of um, honorable vice chancellor of indira gandhi national tribal university sir has uh, given a, a talk on uh, education day uh, my honorable vice chancellor was very inspired uh, about his talk and he always uh, that uh, to keep one lecture half of professor mustaq whenever it is possible <laughs> that's why i always be asking him and uh, i will be associating with him uh, that is the greatness of professor mustaq ahmed patel sir uh, with you i will welcome you sir for this again uh, session sir uh, sir there are uh, 30 participants they are all the student professors who are working in different uh, institutions and different subjects also Uh, most of them are science background and uh, social science as well as humanities uh, most of them familiar with the uh, language of english and few of them are uh, hindi so you can be comfortable in uh, uh, taking care of the a very mixed method wherever it is possible <laughs> so with you you i will come you sir once again and uh, this is a 2 to 3 that is uh, it is a uh, depends upon your uh, way of uh, a presentation and the way of the observations that the with the participants and now i am handing over the session to you thank you sir namaste thank you sir uh, for giving me an opportunity to interact with our colleagues uh, from various parts uh, of india uh, you have been doing a fantastic work and uh, identifying important topics for deliberation uh, i am going to uh, talk my perspective from uh, technology technological aspect let me begin i am going to talk about transform classroom using technology a new research areas as you know that technology is inevitable it has to be utilized in the all parts of our lives whether you are booking a ticket you are watching 
a new movie or you want to read a book or you want to share your thoughts everywhere technology is being utilized classrooms cannot remain aloof teaching learning process cannot remain away from technology so technology is in build technology is making uh, roads in our classroom and when technology is coming in our in our classroom that means we need to know how to utilize this technology since you are doing a multidisciplinary research uh, workshop so i would like to share few research areas also which you can think of doing some research so my topic for today is transforming classroom using new techno using technology new research areas the uh, agenda of today's deliberation is i want to discuss with you the impact of technology on education the impact of technology on our lives is also there since we are uh, connected with education i have exclusively used the slides from canva for interaction today and uh, some uh, ideas i am throwing from my side also in this the impact of technology on education setting up a virtual learning space that is also an important aspect which we are going to deliberate today the classroom or teaching learning process is not restricted only to the classroom four walls of the classroom it is going beyond that that is why i am going to talk about setting up a virtual classroom space then i am going to discuss about the role of interactive technology in education what role it is playing and then if it is playing a role what are the benefits of interactive technologies uh from remote learning and uh, how new normal now new normal has come remote learning is still going on like today we are uh, we are uh, we are we have joined through google meet remote learning is taking place in the new normal uh, we are going to see how it is what it is new trends to watch out what are the new trends where you can do research what is the next uh, what is next in digital learning we are going to look into today's uh, discussion then major focus i am going to make on ict and teaching learning in nep 2020 uh, before i proceed further i would like to know from you whether i am audible to you yes sir you are audible thank you for the confirmation yes, sir. okay now let me yes sir audible sir okay let us examine two no, okay. types of teaching yeah two types of teaching are there one which we have learned in the classroom that is called traditional teaching and learning so the second is teaching and learning using technology uh, what differences do you see old classroom you, uh, imagine your classroom and your children classroom can you suggest me if you give me some inputs what are the differences major differences sister yes please in our time teacher is the only source of knowledge but now now my my child is studying in kb bhubneswar and he is attending uh smart board teaching uh, with uh, other sources that is audio visual ads posters uh, project is involved in project work and so many uh, group works also in our time uh, i was not getting such type of exposures to express myself i only received knowledge from the teacher so what changed your in the classroom teacher used to teach now a student used to just listen and come and do the road learning in the house earlier now what is your child doing at home 
now or now they are learning through uh, means videos also uh, recorded videos etc so they are using internet and computers they are using internet computers okay they are, they are learning from recorded videos are all the videos suitable for students are all the videos suitable for students no sir all videos are not suitable for the students say for example if you talk about a lesson on light optics that may be for a graduation level that may be for a primary level or secondary level also the content of a video program which is for graduation level may not be suitable for the students who are learning at primary level am i right yes sir you are right yes sir correct that means a teacher has to identify what uh, lessons are to be given for the students teachers role instead of coming prepared to the classroom and delivering a lecture it has changed to identify appropriate material earlier you see in traditional classroom physical learning materials and equipments like paper and pen and chalkboard our teachers used to make use of chalkboard or uh, blackboard and we used to uh, use pens and papers now the our student our children are using wider access of educational material and information wider access may include audio video material through whatsapp through online internet or through, through google there was earlier limited access to educational material and information for us our teacher our uh, classroom transaction our textbooks our notebooks what we copied in the school was only the source of information limited access to education now more available channels and tools for communication as well as collaboration suppose if a, your child misses the class he can talk to his friend by over whatsapp get the uh, assignment which is given in the classroom or get the notes what is given in the classroom if there is any reference in the textbook he can go to that website and access that those details so limited access was there earlier now a large number of access, access is there teaching and learning typically occurs in an in person classroom setting earlier if you don't go to the classroom you will miss the bus you will not get the knowledge now you can if you miss the bus also your textbook are so much uh uh so much uh, 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 uh active that the, the textbook gives activities textbook gives uh, locations of the material which it is available so a uh, uh, now child can learn on his own personalized kind of learning he can learn at his free time he can learn at his own speed he can learn either if he is good at reading he can read and learn if he is good at listening he can listen and learn personalized learning is possible so we see that there is change traditional teaching and there is a new way of teaching using technology you can compare all these things in your research if you do, want to do you can uh, check what is the place where teaching is taking place what are the different roles of teacher and learner what are the uh, parents doing you can make a comparative study you can see what are the available resources or materials what was the earlier material and resources available what are the resources available now a comparison can be made your effectiveness can be assessed you can similarly find out uh, uh, how uh, uh, individual is learning or what is its effect so these are the things which you can do i am going to talk about virtual classroom what do you mean by virtual classroom what do you mean by a virtual classroom sir virtual classroom is just like we are uh, we are now interacting like with a virtual classroom okay in a, what is a classroom what is a classroom sir classroom is a room where where physically a student and teacher meets and uh, they will uh, they will take part in teaching and learning process 
ट्रू करेक्ट करेक्ट प्योर राइट टीचिंग लर्निंग टेक्स प्लेस इन द क्लास रूम ओके इन अ क्लास रूम वॉट ऑल थिंग्स आर देर सर सर व्हाइट बोर्ड इज देयर चाक इज देयर लाइट इज देयर सर टेबल एंड चेयर इज देयर टेक्स्ट बुक इज देयर लेबोरेटरी इज देयर लाइब्रेरी इज देयर एम आई राइट यस सर एंड व्हेन द क्लास रूम स्टार्ट्स व्हेन इट एंड्स इट इट स्टार्ट्स एट मिस एट At its fifth time, sir, like uh, means office time, ten to okay. four, ten to five. Correct. Right. 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 Huh? Uh, that is one. When you, you we speak about an academic calendar, when a classroom starts, when when it ends, academic calendar. So academic calendar, sir, uh, sir, July to uh, July to uh, this uh, May. It actually. Okay. okay. July to April or May. Okay. Right. Huh? This and uh, what all activities we do during this period, July to May. Sir, uh, sir, uh, in this one, uh, teaching and learning, examination, practicals, uh, these all activities is usually done. Ah, uh, done. Okay. Teacher teaches and teacher evaluates also. Huh? Teacher gives uh, library work. Teacher gives laboratory work. Teacher uses different uh, types of. Uh, materials for explanation teacher uses charts teacher uses various things for teaching am i right all those things have yes, to built into a virtual classroom if you are thinking of a virtual classroom virtual classroom uh, should have all those things in built into it a teacher should be there a student should be there there should be a learning material there should be evaluation material if you are te teaching only theoretical aspect how to teach if you are teaching practical aspects how to teach when to conduct examination what reference material is to be used if parents have to be communicated how they have to be communicated all these things comes to our mind when we talk of a classroom or a school there is there are different subject teachers there are different administrators all these are there am i right in virtual classroom we have to built in to our virtual classroom all these things for that purpose you have to pick a learning material system lms what we call lms lms means lms is a platform where you can store online courses you may be having lot many online courses you may be having a guidance course for higher education for teachers you may have a course for teachers who are teaching mathematics you may have bed as a program so store all those courses online that be, that is one condition a learning management system the stored material can be delivered to the person who has registered for a particular class so you have to de deliver if suppose uh, i am talking about picking a learning management system you have to pick a learning management system which can store lot of courses uh, for that purpose for knowing lms you need to study the system uh, so that you can maximize you uh, maximize its usage for example there may be a blackboard learn maybe one of the lms there may be moodle which may be one of the lms there may be 360 learning uh, as an lms there may be sociology uh school schoology schoology may be one of the lms there may be google classroom one of the lms you have to know what are the potentialities because you are in a lms you are going to store the material you are going to store text material you are going to store audio material you are going to store video material you are going to store quizzes you are going to store assignments and uh, so that on a particular uh, specific days you are going to give a virtual classroom should meet all the requirements teaching learning should be there evaluation should be there grading should be there how the student is pro uh, progressing reports have to be generated so all these uh, facilities are there in a learning management system for that purpose you need to study what is a learning management system what are the different learning management systems are and which uh, has got a potential which can be utilized for our classroom in a virtual classroom 
Second step is review all online learning materials. Unless and until you know, uh, if you know your vehicle, where is the accelerator, where is the brake, where is the clutch, how to change the gear, what yeah, speed it can go, how you have to apply brakes, uh, when you have to stop, how you have to drive in city, how you have to go, uh, uh, if you go outside the city. If you know all these possibilities, definitely you can drive very well. In addition to uh, basics of uh, driving, you should know potentialities of your software or your vehicle. Similarly, review all online learning material which is available. Stay prepared and know how to use the material. If you are prepared uh, to utilize the material, definitely it will help you. Like online learning materials, we have got e-learning courses. Various courses are available which can be utilized in classroom. You have got video tutorials, for example, in YouTube. You have got video tutorials you can use. Interactive text uh, uh, context uh, you can use. You can use webinar uh, for this purpose. You can use live uh, sessions. You can use articles uh, or ebooks or blogs. These are the different kinds of learning materials which are available digitally online. You should know all these things. You can, uh, may, uh, must know what are the audio podcasts, what are the audio books, so that you can share the link to your particular classroom. For example, if science students are there in your virtual classroom, you need to show on, uh, share with them only science material. If teacher education students are there, you share them teaching learning material, how to do that. For that, the teachers should be aware that what learning material is available. Third step is invest in a calendar and uh, communication apps. Use the necessary tools to manage your time well. See, if you tell your students when your course is starting, when it is ending, when the assign first assignment has to be given, when the second assignment is to be submitted, when the uh, term and examination is going to be there, when you are going to result, you, uh, declare the result. If you invest in calendar and communication app, your virtual classroom becomes very much uh, useful. For this purpose, real-time collaboration has to be made. Real-time collaboration, like you and me are connected through Google Meet. Google Meet is one uh, example where in real time we are connected. Like that Zoom is there, WebEx is there, and many other uh, Microsoft Teams is there. Various uh, uh, means are there through which we can get connected. This is one communication. The teacher and the taught teacher or the parent can be communicating to each other. Group discussions can be done. Group discussions can be done. Like, for example, if you take Microsoft Teams, the projects, if you allotted, every, all the children can uh, do the work from their, uh, uh, their respective areas. Say, for example, in Google Drive, if you take a Google Doc, Google Doc is a Word file of the Google. Uh, Google. And you can ask four ch different children, one child to write the uh, uh, title of the uh, uh, research uh, uh, problem, problem of the uh, study. Another child can write what tools can be utilized. Another child can write what uh, data he has collected. One person can draw the figure. One person can give uh, the findings. So the, uh, by using these communication apps, we can interact with each other. Then discussion forums can be held. Discussion forums can be held in this uh, communication app using Canvas or Moodle. These are, these are examples. A discussion can be held. And instant messaging also is one thing which can be utilized in virtual classroom. Instant messaging. What instant messaging tool you are using to communicate? Do you use any instant messaging tool to communicate with each other? which is very popular now? Sir, WhatsApp. WhatsApp. 
WhatsApp can be used for communicating with each other. Uh, instant messaging is possible. Then finally, in this, feedback and uh, support can also be extended. Uh, when you are interacting with your children, uh, in a classroom, you will be giving a general instruction. Whereas if you are talking uh, through WhatsApp, you can give personal communication. And then a fourth step in setting up a virtual classroom is select a secure live streaming platform. See, earlier in the when COVID had come, when we all started using Zoom, we, uh, there was a lot of uh, intrusion, a lot of unwanted guests used to come. That is why they created a waiting uh, room. And from there, teachers used to admit uh, unwanted people were uh, joining the group and attacking. So uh, we have to take care of our uh, students. Select a, a secure live streaming platform. Platform. Choose a robust platform that can help with your objectives. Like Zoom is one platform which you can use. Microsoft Teams is one platform. You can use YouTube Live. You can use Vimeo. How many of you have been using uh, streaming live? How many of you have been using uh, uh, live streaming? Have you done any? live streaming of videos through YouTube. Yes, sir. We no, are you are done. Okay. Uh, what type of material can be live streamed? What are the different types of materials which can be live streamed? Can you live stream your lecture? Yes, sir. Can you? Live stream your lecture? Yes, sir. Why not? Okay. Uh, can you live stream your demonstration? Yes, sir. It can be. Can we conduct uh, question and answers in a live session? Yes, sir. Is there any geographical boundary? No, sir. Uh, like you may be sitting somewhere in uh, at one place of India. I am sitting in another place of India but we are in touch with each other. There is no geographical boundaries. We can conduct polls, quizzes, all these things live uh, streaming platform, uh, through live streaming platforms we can do. Finally, in a virtual classroom, we can choose apps that foster collaboration, create a learning environment that encourages teamwork. Here, uh, if you use collaboration, what will happen is a child will see another child what he is doing. He can get motivated and collaborate. So we can have a whiteboard. In a whiteboard, like uh, Google Meet also, we have got a whiteboard where you can write, I can write, you can give, give your inputs. So that is possible. We can do editing in real time and we can share the documents also. In a virtual classroom, what you have to do initially, first step is to identify what learning management system you are going to use. And you should know what are the available online learning materials. And you should plan communication. You start broadcasting or streaming your uh, videos or material. Choose apps that can foster collaboration. So these are the things you should keep in mind. The role of interactive technology in learning. Interactive technology opens up the way we teach and learn. The way we teach and learn. Like uh, previously, I conducted a session at IGNTU, uh, MMTTC. There I gave polls, quizzes in my presentation. Interactive technology. In the present session, I am asking you to give your talk. Uh, you, you are responding to me orally. I am taking your responses. Interactive technology uh, helps you to design in a different way as you desire. Interactive technology opens up the way we teach and learn. Interactive technology helps create opportunities for communication. It can encourage teachers and students to communicate more, share, and discuss ideas and collaborate with each other. Like teachers can uh, interact with teachers, teachers can interact with students, students 
one student can interact with one student one student can interact with many students one teacher can interact with one student one teacher can interact with many uh, students also a lot of possibilities emerge uh, and they can uh, share their ideas they can discuss their ideas they can collaborate with each other you give them projects they all collaborate and try to solve the problems if you are using interactive technology you as a researcher you see what are the possibilities where interactive technology can be used what methods can be used and if so what are the benefits of interactive technology interactive technology is beneficial for both teachers as well as students let us uh, look into the benefits uh, which it has for teachers for teachers the benefits are it allows teachers to be more flexible teachers can use different teaching methods and tools to suit their lessons and students i told you uh, i have used oral communication also as a lecture method i have created interactivity by giving uh, providing opportunity for you to respond orally you can give your observation through ch uh, chat in the google meet i have used poll everywhere uh, dot com uh, where uh, word cloud uh, responses are possible uh, rating responses are possible where uh, long answers are possible open ended answers quizzes can be conducted and we can use brainstorming like a mind mister uh, we can share the mind mister slide with everybody all can give ideas say for example if i give main theme as uh, like uh, state of matter state of matter you can say state of matter you can divide into three parts it may be a solid it can be a liquid it can be a gas three so if a solid is there solid you can give examples example 1 example 2 example 3 then example 1 you give characteristics so from one theme you are going uh, creating branches brainstorming will give uh, one person will be working on solids one uh, person will be working on uh, liquids another person will be working on uh, gases so like that teaching methods can be changed either talk can be given or quizzes can be asked brainstorming can be done so different methods can be used by the teachers and they, you can connect to uh, more students using technology in the classroom also you can connect to uh, students all the say for example 40 students are there in your class you can connect to all 40 as well but there will not be in person communication if it is done through technology probably you will do one to one uh, interaction also using the whatsapp uh, this is one thing another allows access to more resources if teachers are using technology teachers are able to find additional and updated learning resources that can help them uh, with their work earlier in the classroom you already said our teachers were using only textbook textbook which was written 5 years back 6 years back same textbook is being transacted every year there is no latest or update on that so now that is not the situation each teacher has to look into his textbook and look into the latest development like journals or look into the websites so that is possible if technology is used for students let us see what are the uh, uh, benefits benefits of using technology for students are students have more freedom to choose the methods and tools that help them learn best see for example more personalized learning is possible if a person is unable to uh, see he can listen or somebody else can read for him by using technology this is possible you can use text to voice text to voice 
whatever content is available, is, if suppose this content is available on your screen, the text to voice or screen reader can read the entire content. I am, and a blind person also can hear to that. In a classroom, say for example, all students are unable to hear to the teacher who is speaking in front row. Uh, those who are sitting at the back side will not be able to hear. That is why what uh, in a, when you use a technology, probably uh, it, you can increase the volume and all children who are sitting in the classroom uh, in the, at their pers uh, personal study tables can hear to you. Personalized learning is possible. Personalized learning is possible uh, because there is no fixed time. 10 to 5 is not the fixed time where the classes are conducted. Recorded classes can be heard at later stages. Improves students' communication. Most of the students we know are unable to talk to their teacher uh, in the classroom. They have fear of interaction or they fear that the other students will bully them. But they will definitely write a question uh, in a text. So it improves communication. Communication is possible through oral means, through text means, or through, uh, say for example, if somebody has done some homework, he can take a snap or a picture and share it with the teacher and ask them, ask him or her whether that material written is correct. So improve student communication. Help students prepare for future. Now, technology, see, when we were learning, we were not aware that technology is going to come in such a way. When I was learning computer, I thought it will be useful only for calculation purposes. I never thought that uh, the computer, which is available on my desktop, will be giving me a, a journal on my table. I never thought that I'll be able to interact. I never thought that I can do exams. I never thought that the computer itself will generate some information and I can make use of. I never thought that my way of talking can be supplemented by this PowerPoint or slides or this presentation. So a lot of technological advancements have occurred and henceforth also, a lot of technological advancements are going to take place and hence technology helps us to learn better, to uh, adapt for the future. This is the advantage for students. Remote learning has become new normal. During COVID, we started remote learning. Some of our teachers knew how to operate computers, mobiles, some of our teachers did not know how to utilize the computer. But now, in new normal, we all have learned. Either we are learning through this technology or we are learning about the technology we are trying to adapt. So remote learning is taking place in new normal also. It is important right now, but is it the future? Yes, I think it is the future. Institutes can adapt to offer a combination of remote and in-person learning. I am seeing that some of the teachers are conducting some of their face-to-face -face classes. They are converting into online classes also. So remote learning is going on and it is taking new shape. So blended learning is also coming. Technology is an effective tool. Technology is an effective tool. Technology is not everything all alone. It's only a tool. Say, for example, farmer works in a farm. Farm, land, and water, uh, the seeds, the uh, land property, uh, sunlight, all these things are there. Tool is, tool, uh, it will help uh, him to grow the crop. It, uh, like that, uh, technology is a tool for teachers, effective tool. Uh, that can make education more meaningful. Education was taking place without technology also. Have you not learned? Uh, without technology. For us, technology was talk and talk. The way teacher was talking, the pauses he was taking, the interesting stories he was telling, the colorful chalks he used to write on the blackboard was technology of that time. There was no technology like computer or PowerPoint presentation 
or online resources, digital library, nothing was there during those times. So uh, technology with technology, effective te uh, technology is effective tool that can make education more meaningful and engaging for both teachers and students. Now, technology is an effective tool so for both teachers and uh, uh, students. That is what we have to understand. If that is the scenario, we need to know what is next in digital learning. Digital learning, all of us are learning. We are learning through WhatsApp. We are learning through online newspapers. We are learning through YouTube. We are learning through uh, online books, online radio, etc. So what is the next? Online classroom means digital learning for everyone. Earlier, formal education means 10 to 5. Education means, school education means 6 to 14 years. And uh, those who have registered only were learning. Parents were not learning what their children are learning. Now, online classroom means parents are also learning. But most of the time, during the COVID times, it, uh, classes were classes for the, uh, your children as well as you as parents also. Some of you were learning, uh, attending the classes. And most of us were critical of our teachers also. Uh, in India, there is a tendency to be critical. When we talk about how Kohli has to play, how Tendulkar has to play, definitely we say, uh, we talk about our teachers, how they have to teach, what they have to teach. But how much effort teachers are putting, that also we have to see. Online classroom means now there is no restriction. There is digital learning for everyone. A global market for practical courses and credentials. It has become a global the digital learning has become a global market uh, for practical courses. If you are an engineer, new technology has come, you would like to learn. If you are a teacher, new MOOCs program has come, you will try to learn. So it has become a global market. You are learning from Manu, you are learning from uh, Igno, you are learning from British Open University, you are learning from MIT. All, everywhere you can learn. There is uh, education everywhere. Improvement in the quality of blended learning. Blended learning, blending means two things, mixing two things, face-to-face -face as a online. So there is improvement now. Part of the course you can give in the classroom and part of the course you can give it from outside. So digital learning makes it possible. There is improvement in the quality of this. A rising demand for skill-based programs. Skill-based programs which are essential uh, Say, for example, if somebody, uh, somebody is working on air conditioners, there is an online program. Definitely, he would like to do that skill-based program. A lady who is working in the kitchen will be definitely interested to learn new ways of uh, uh, keeping inventory in the kitchen. So, a new skill will be developed. Rising demand. You can keep the inventory, how to keep the inventory, or how to keep uh, the kitchen neat and clean how to uh, uh, show your home a uh, beautiful house. So all these skill-based programs, some examples I'm giving, everywhere it is possible. Greater investment on inter interactive technology is uh, in solving the digital divide. The more you uh, invest on digital interactive technology, the digital divide can be uh, covered. Here, I would like to quote David Warlick. He says that, we need technology in every classroom. We need technology in every classroom. Uh, it is not that only uh, uh, higher education institutes we need technology or only school education we need technology or pre-primary we need technology or secondary we need technology. Every class needs techno uh, technology. And uh, in every student and teacher's hands, it uh, should not be restricted to only teachers or it should be rest not be restricted only to the students. Technology should be made available to all because the reason what David Warlick is giving is uh, because it is the pen and paper of our time. When we were using pen and paper our, in our childhood, now technology is the pen and paper. And it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. Nehru uh, uh, has said that let English be there 
in our education system because english opens the door to the entire world like that technology is the lens through which we can experience the entire world technology should be there if maybe you and me might not have gone outside uh, india or we might have gone the more more than your visits your material has been referred whatever you have posted in on your websites blogs or you have referred the material which is posted elsewhere so technology is making it possible so technology has to be utilized these are the few things which i have discussed uh, about uh, uh, which were present in the presentation uh, which was available on canva and i am going to add a few more things i am going to talk to you about ict and technology in uh, nep 2020 when you want to do research you should know what are the new changes taking place whether now the new important change which has taken place is national education policy has come into 2020 still we are contemplating and planning how to implement it and they uh, the national education policy has spoken about ict and technology ict is information communication technology and technology in general also they have spoken uh, the nep has two dedicated chapters on technology a chapter 12, number 23 the which gives technology use and integration this topic talks about technology use and integration chapter number 24 talks about online and digital education uh, ensuring equitable use of technology these are the two chapters which are dedicated for uh, uh, technology the technology ict is also mentioned very less uh, seldom very seldom but it is mentioned uh, when using for adult education adult education i was talking to you about school education higher education but for adult education also nep is saying that techno ict has to be utilized what kind of ict can be utilized satellite based television earlier we used to connect our television directly through satellite now we are making use of cables either through internet cable or the television cable we are weaving the programs so satellite based television channels like swayam prabha can be utilized online books can be given to the uh, adult adults for learning and ict equipped libraries have to be created this is what nep is mentioning nep is also saying identify digital performers meet the current and future challenges uh, ict is asking to use digital platforms digital platforms which can meet the current requirements whatever best technology is available say for example animation picture is available for adult education use it if there is a video program use it if there is an online question use it for adult education but it can be used a new future technology there should be scope for using the future technology also that is what uh, uh, this is saying national education policy is saying before i go further i would like to uh, tell you as this is the first slide uh, can you just tell me let me ask you a question since policy has come in 2020 what uh, what kind of streams or discipline uh, it may be saying that technology should be used you most of you are from science background Yes, sir. Uh, does uh, NEP say that the technology should be used for science only? Not sir. Mass Not. communication. Somebody says mass communication. Okay, technology has to be used. Very good. What are the other streams or disciplines? आप लोगों को समझ में आ रहा है सुनाई दे रहा है आर्ट्स कॉमर्स मैनेजमेंट एटसेट्रा 
what may NEP may be saying? Which level? What are the different levels of education? Sir, uh, from uh, graduation to uh, PhD can be today. Yeah. Graduation, PhD, we call higher education. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, higher sir. education, it can be useful. Right? Yes. Does yes. that mean technology should not be used at other levels? What are the other levels? Sir, other levels can are 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2. Oh, yeah. Secondary level, second, higher yes. secondary level, primary yes. level, pre-primary level. So these yes. are the different streams. Uh, these, are, these are the different levels where technology can be used. Yes, sir. So uh, for whom technology can be used? What the NEP might be saying? For whom technology has to be used? NEP is an educational policy. Okay? For, for students and for teachers both. For students, technology has to be used. For teachers, uh, technology has to be used. Somebody says that interdisciplinary level uh, technology has to be used. Very good. That is correct. Uh, and now uh, we are talking about stakeholders. What are the different stakeholders? Teachers are there. Students are there. Are there parents, stakeholders, beneficiaries? Yes, sir. Are the officers involved uh, in the teaching learning process or management, uh, uh, management of the institute? Are they part of the teaching learning process? They are not the directly part of, but uh, they will be. Uh, they will also get benefited out of this uh, info um, ICT. Okay. Uh, the do uh, if suppose uh, there is some community leader or community outside school, are they connected with the schools? They can be connected, sir, if they want by using ICT and all. They can know what is the progress and all. Correct, correct. They are also connected. That means the NEP says that the technology has to be integrated in education such that parents should be uh, given training, a teacher should be given training. Where I will tell you, students can be given induction, then government or public or private uh, 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 organizations can be involved and officers can be involved community at large can also be involved so nep is talking giving a scope to involve all these uh, all these aspects that is the advantage of uh, yeah let me uh, go uh, again what language is uh, uh, nep is talking about what are the different English languages? Language. Uh, yeah, uh, technology has to be used in English language. Whether English language alone? No, sir. NEP also talks about that local languages. Teaching and learn, learning should be in local languages. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, but a problem of local language and uh, in context of India, Hindi, uh, Indian languages, sir. Because ICT is not treat to Indian language and the local language. Mm -hmm. ICT, what did you say? ICT is not suitable for Indian and uh, language? Yes, sir. Some, some is a lot of problems, sir. Phonetics uh, and other rules. Uh, let me ask you one question. What are the Indian languages in which you have used ICT? Sir, just like a Hindi. Okay. Okay. Anna, sometimes yeah. computer yeah, some words are not read properly and not correct right to uh, properly in the computer yeah, ICT. So as a problem of uh, nature as per language. See, uh, the more you use the language, probably you will get more accustomed and your technology gets adopted to it. Are we not saying uh, Hindi, Kannada, Telugu, Urdu program, video programs or uh, 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 television programs that is use of ICT in local languages? Isn't it? Are we not uh, sending text material in WhatsApp in local languages? We are sending. 
are we not taking images of local languages and sending to our friends? Yes, we are sending. So we are making use of these uh, Indian languages also. NEP is saying that machine translation also should be there. And the, it is asking to set up a uh, national level body which can translate the material into Indian languages. Whatever, we know that a lot of material is available in English. But same material should be available in our own languages. Because when a child goes from high school in his mother tongue to English medium college, then he faces a lot of problems. He will not be able to cope up. That is why if mother uh, material is available in his mother tongue, probably he can understand the uh, text. That is why it is useful. So all Indian languages, like in our university, Maulana Azad National Urdu University has been uh, given the task of translating the material into Urdu. Uh, whatever latest uh, developments are there, they are asking to create books and publish the books. Similarly, different uh, uh, institutes have been given task to translate in uh, local languages. So, variations of school, uh, stakeholders. Uh, you have been teaching your students. Do all the students learn at the same speed? No, sir. So what happens in the classroom? What happens in the classroom? Like, uh, how, with what speed you go uh, teach in the classroom? So we used to uh, teach in a way, in a speed by which all the students should me uh, should should be able to capture, uh, should be able to understand. So we we used to ensure until then we will be uh, we will be holding that topic. We will not move. All right, right. I agree uh, with you, but the national education policy says that it should be an inclusive education. Earlier, uh, say for example, physically handicapped children or what we call divan children now. Divan children were put in a separate schools, deaf, dumb schools. Separate schools were there. Those who do not have eyes, so blind schools were different. But national education policy says that put all, them, all of them together in one school. Some of them are learning very quickly, very fast. Some of them are learning very slow. So, slow learners are there, gifted students are there in the same class. If a school, a class has got 40 students, maybe two gifted uh, children will be there. Maybe two slow learners are there. You are catering to the needs of only 30, uh, about 30 students. Rest of the 10 students, you are not, uh, not at all bothered. But technology, through the technology, it is possible that individualized learning can be given. Those who are very fast at learning or gifted children, you can give them more number of assignments using the technology. Those who are slow, you can give them additional material so that they can go home, simply sit along with the material, play with that and learn uh, with their speed. So that variations, students are of different types. That can be, a uh, learning can be possible. NEP also says that Different formats of material has to be given. What are the different materials which from which you learn? One is, suppose if I record this lesson and give it to you in audio or video form. You can see it at your own level, leisure time. Am I right? Yes, sir. Uh, you can, what other materials are you are referring to uh, gather information? Like How you are getting notes we are providing. You are, you, are, uh, uh, you, are, you can gather the information through notes. You can gather the information through textbook. You can gather the information through talks. Okay? So that means print, non-print, and digital materials are available. So through all these formats, uh, NEP says that all these have to be exploited. That is the advantage. Stages. Uh, what are the different stages you are uh, teachers? Uh, when the uh, college starts, at what stage of uh, student 
level. When do you start the college for student? First thing, what the, uh, is the child a part of your college always? Yes, sir. No, imagine if he has passed graduation or he has passed high school, secondary education, then he wants to come to your college or university. What he has to do? He has to get admission and then he can come. Admission. Do you think that admission, at admission level, technology can be used? Yes, sir. Easily it can be used, sir. What technology is being used now? Sir, uh, but generally, the, like computer is used where Excel sheet is there, everything we can uh, include all the informations in that Excel sheet. <clears throat> Online admissions are possible? Yes. Yes, sir. Online admissions are possible. Technology is used. Do you do teaching through using technology? Yes, sir. We use PPTs. So, we use PPTs. So teaching is possible through the use of technology. Do you evaluate students by using technology? Yes, sir. What, what uh, uh, modes you are using to uh, evaluate? Google form and mostly, sir, Google form, right? objective okay. and descriptive question for all. Right. So this is the simplest way uh, you are using. Do you do research using technology? Sir, theoretical research can be can be done, but uh, but practical sir, experiment, experiment can, cannot be performed, sir. Have you used the uh, digitally available online laboratories in any of the labs? No idea, sir. You visit Diksha uh, platform. Diksha platform provides various experiments uh, which can be done online. Okay? That is also possible. Uh, further research also you can explore. Do you do, uh, suppose if results come out, do you communicate to uh, parents? Do you communicate to parents? What mode do you use? Even others can also respond. Do you use any modes of communication? Sir, phone, Through phone, phone also you can call and inform. That is also use of ICT. Okay? You can SMS. Okay? You can WhatsApp. You can conduct online meeting. So communication also is done through using uh, technology. Attendance of the student is also kept uh, by using technologies. So new technologies are also emerging which can be used. See, Technology can, uh, uh, when we are talking about NEP, National Education Policy, and use of technology, technology is not restricted only for those who have registered, who are registered students, for adult learners also. Within the uh, system, outside the system also, technology is going to uh, affect. So that is the use. Uh, let me take specific examples given in the NEP 2020. NEP 2020 is uh, emphasizing on use of technology. As I have told you, two specific chapters are devoted for use of technology and how to use, what to use, where to use, what uh, arrangements are to be made. Everything has been said into that. Probably as uh, per the requirement of the new scenario, we can change it. I was talking about DVANG students. DVANG students are physically challenged students. Uh, for them, orientation has to be given for parents and caregivers. For orientation, how to handle children can be given through online modes using the technology. Online interaction can be held with parents or the caregivers who are handling them. How, what are the safety measures they have to take? How their education has to be done? All this can be done uh, using 
technology. You can uh, give them assistive devices. What assistive devices are? Suppose if somebody is hard of hearing, you can give ear earphone for them. How to use earphone? When to use? Uh, whether we have to keep it a permanent or if somebody is unable to uh, uh, walk, a lame person can be given uh, artificial limb, assistive technology. These are the technologies and we have to connect the parents uh, by orienting them. So that is possible only by using technology. Teaching and learning uh, of different languages. For this purpose, high quality translation. NEP envisages that there should be high quality uh, translation uh, in uh, material has to be given. Because all material is not available in Indian languages. So all Indian languages, uh, material should be made, made available. Not only Google translation, the material should be very high quality. That is what it is said. Educational technology in beard program. When we are talking about a school education, teacher education is also important. When we are talking about teacher education, beard comes to our mind. And when we are talking about beard, utilization of technology comes to our mind. Integration of technology to 6 to 14 has to be made. Now, let us look into higher educational institutes and technology, role of government and non-government organizations and use of technology. For higher educational uh, institutes, all of us are working in higher education. Without technology, there is no possibility of communication. Whether we are conducting online meetings, online admission, online publication of papers, everywhere technology is involved. Technology development centers have to be established. It is policy saying that technology development centers have to be established in each higher education institution. Suitable resources, when we want to de uh, de uh, develop a center, that means we have to allocate the area, we have to give them budget to purchase the material, and all the resources and infrastructure have to be given. So higher education have, uh, institutes have to make provision for this. Classrooms with latest educational technology have to be created. You look at the older time of classroom, only chalkboard was there, only uh, sitting chairs were there. Now we are seeing that uh, there are for, uh, uh, there are uh, projectors in the classroom, there are screens in the classroom, there are computers in the classroom, or you take your uh, computer the, to the classroom. There is internet connectivity in the classroom, and there are a lot many changes which are going to come in future. So as the days proceed, pro uh, progress, new technologies have to be procured. But procurement of technology is not a simple, simple activity. For procurement of technology, we need to give some finances. It is not the expected that teachers will put the money and procure their, their technologies. No, the, we have to strengthen and build the uh, institutes. Institutes can be strengthened if we equip them with new technologies. However, utilization of that technology, we can train teachers. That uh, for utilization of technology, these arrangements are to be made. Whether provision of technology is only the responsibility of government or it is the responsibility of non-governmental non organization. What do you think? What do you think? Whether provision of technology is the responsibility of only Government? No, sir. It should not be, sir. I hope I am reaching to everybody, all the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Instead of responding uh, in chat, you can orally talk because it's a small group. So it is not that uh, technology integration is only government responsibility. Non-governmental organization also have to be involved. State has to be involved. We have got uh, two different kinds of government in India. One is state government, another is central government. State governments and central governments are to be involved. Both have to take their responsibility because education comes under concurrent list. It is not limited to state and central government also. Crowd sourcing of funds has to be done. 
This is what NDP says. NDP says that we have to do crowdsourcing of funds. Like if you want to set up a studio in your college or institute, you can pull money from the crowd also. That is also policy uh, possible and possi uh, uh, <coughs> policy is making provision for that. I told you about uh, Diksha. Diksha and Swayam are two kinds of platforms. Swayam, Swayam Prabha, etc. Swayam, a lot of MOOCs material, self-learning materials are available, which can be referred by teachers. Teachers can get training uh, through these materials. Diksha, a lot of audio visual, uh, audio visual material is available on, uh, online. I was interacting with uh, a uh, few of the resource persons of uh, Maharashtra, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, uh, Madhya Pradesh, etc., Goa, etc. They said that they were involved in the process of development of audiovisual materials for school level. For that, they have verified the content. They have identified the teachers who can record the programs. After recording, the content is verified. Any correction is made and question answers are added and at appropriate level and different mediums uh, this has been hosted. So material is available, technological material and national education policy is talking about these two, Swayam and Diksha and they want to strengthen this. Next is national education policy is talking about setting up a National Education Technology Forum. At the national level, like we have got UGC, we have got NCT, we have got NAC, etc. Similarly, a national level uh, forum will be established, National Educational Technology Forum. That uh, technology forum will be an autonomous body. Autonomous body, it will decide what technology has to be utilized at what level, who is going to do what, uh, who is going to create what kind of pro, uh, uh, material going to create created by whom, and who is going to verify that, when it is to be used. All these things, if new technology is coming, what old technology has to be done, whether we have to scrap and go for new technology, what new technology has to be utilized, all these things. By creation of this forum, we can have enhanced learning. Learning can become enhanced. Assessment uh, like PARAC is established. PARAC is going to digitally uh, evaluate. Uh, that is possible. And NETF is going to uh, help into that. Planning is possible. Uh, at school level planning, uh, guidelines can be given by NETF. At state level planning, they can give broader guidelines. Then NETF at the uh, higher level, uh, the national level also, can give uh, planning and administration guidelines, etc. It is not restricted like we have got school education and higher education. There is no bifurcation. NETF is going to look into both school education and higher education. It is uh, going to advise the government. It is going to build the capacities, advising what technology has to be adopted, when the equipment has to be purchased, what are the important equipments to be purchased? Build the capacity. It is going to build the capacity. Capacity of teachers, maybe science teachers, maybe arts teachers, maybe higher education teachers, maybe evaluators. So everybody needs to know what technology is to be used, how it has to be used. Like Google Form, you may be familiar. This new uh, way of assessment is to be done like using Kahoot. Then you may not be aware then you need to be uh, given training. So building capacity. What are the thrust areas? Which are the areas? Mathematics education is there. Science education is there. Higher education is there. No, uh, primary or secondary education is there. What are the thrust area it is going to identify? It is going to give new direction of the research. Like, if, for example, I am for the use of technology for educational purpose. But what is happening is, Continuously looking into technology, children are going astray. They are getting addicted to it. That is a new area of research which has to be done. New directions and new research areas will be suggested by National Educational Technology Forum. So, 
this is uh, final slide. I am going to speak for a couple of minutes. Then I would like uh, to invite your uh, observations. So technology interventions has to be made for teaching, and learning, and evaluation. All the three stages for teaching purposes. Uh, you can use, say, for example, if you are talking about blended learning, blended learning means how much you are going to blend, how much face-to-face -face teaching has to be given, how much online learning has to be blended. 50% in the classroom, 50% from online. That can be. Or flipped learning. Flipped learning, we normally teach in the classroom and give assignments for, for whom? In flipped learning, we give a uh, uh, child some material to learn at home and we discuss what he has learned in the classroom. So teaching learning is changing. Always it is possible. So teaching learning and evaluation purpose is one where technology will, will be utilized. Teacher pre uh, preparation and professional development. See, uh, most of us, uh, if you are a BA graduate, you may be knowing that when you have done your BA, or you may be young generation, when your teachers had done the BA, probably during that time there was no technology and they are not familiar with uh, uh, familiar of technology. Maybe your parents or grand, uh, grandparents may have used only uh, phone for communication, oral communication. They do not know how to chat. So uh, we, uh, teachers do not know how to use technology in the classroom. So teacher preparation uh, is old. Prof continuous professional development has to be made for use of technology. Educational access. By using the technology, access has enhanced. Everybody can learn. There is no uh, like quality. If a good teacher is available in a good school, only he is able to cater to the needs of that particular school or classes where he is teaching. But a good teacher if he records audio video program, he can be accessed irrespective of the geographical boundaries by many. So educational access is possible. For educational planning, if you are planning for your institute, if you are planning for your, uh, your school, then you can make use of uh, uh, technology. You can plan how many students can be taken admission, what is the income generated out of it, and how much you are going to spend on teachers' salaries, how non-teaching staff, and how much you are going to make use of uh, for uh, building construction or development of the school. So everything is possible. When you are going to start the school, when you are going to close, planning is possible using technology. Management, administration, admission, attendance, and assessment, everything can be done using technology. So this is possible. Educational software can be developed. Now, most of us are using Google Translate for translating our material. In addition to Google Translate, there are various government interventions we need to know and utilize those for uh, 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 translating the material in our own mother tongue. Diksha and Swam, rating. See, uh, uh, have you used any app for Purchase or travel? Have you used any apps? Yes, sir. What apps you are used? Sir, for for purchasing we have used Amazon, Flipkart, etc. And for uh, travel we have used IRCTC, IRCTC, Make My Trip, etc. Ola, Uber, etc. Hmm? Yes, sir. Ola, Uber, yes. Sir. Now, uh, have you seen that when you are downloading Ola or Uber uh, app, the rating is given there? Yes, sir, it is given. Rating is there for app. Have yes. you seen that rating is there for each of the driver? Yes, sir, that is also there. I, uh, is there any rating for the passenger? No, sir, that is not there may not be visible to us, may be visible for the driver. Okay? Okay, sir. So now you see, uh, similarly, when you create a pro, uh, video program, your program will also be rated. Teacher's rating will also be done. 
So that is also possible. You see that in YouTube, uh, some people like, subscribe, and use many videos. So such videos are useful for them. So rating is also there. Uh, and by rating, a good quality teacher can be segregated by an ordinary teacher. Uh, and you will uh, get more rating in that. Now, disruptive technologies. When 1986 policy or 1992 plan of action or 1968 policy had come, during that time, disruption was not there. Disruption technologies were not there. We were teaching only in the classroom. We were not going out of the classroom and teaching them. Now, new, normal, a new situation has come. Wherein we are using artificial intelligence, we are using 3D, 7D, virtual reality, which these were not envisaged in earlier policies. Now, new policies uh, uh, is aware of this and it is asking to utilize technology in this case. So these are some of the ideas. And do, if you have any questions, we have got some time left. You can ask me a question or share your observation regarding use of technology or where and how you are going to do research using technology. Sir, I have one question. Sir, uh, my 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 simple question is, sir, how to make this online uh, teaching uh, like uh, interactive and uh, useful, uh, similar to sim similar to what we are experiencing in uh, in a class? Because one experience I have my students when I taught in uh, COVID time, and uh, when I taught in like uh, in a classroom, so so students re realized like. Uh, uh, classroom was much better than than the online class. So means how we can make that online classes are like this kind of teaching more effective. The students should be active or like more teaching and learning process. How we can improve it? Thank you. Sir. Yeah, you tell me why it is more effective when you talk about the face to face class. Why it is more effective? Because you see your students. Yes, sir. You understand their needs. Yes, sir. You demonstrate the material. Yes, sir. You ask their questions. What is yes. their behavior? Yes, sir. Are we doing the same thing in our online programs? No. No, no sir. Like today's program, I've yes, kept sir. my camera on. Because yes, of bandwidth, probably, you all have switched off your camera. Yes, sir. I am asking questions to yes, learn from you whether you are understanding. Some of you are responding. All are not responding. But I am, I have, I am asking you uh, continuously so that I should understand whether I am able to reach you. Now you asked a question. Uh, if students are not able to see teacher practically, probably they will not learn. Yes. And many of, time, many of the times I have seen, yeah, this is my observation also, class is going on, child has switched on the camera, uh, switched on the, uh, means uh, he has logged into the uh, meeting, but he is not available uh, in front of the computer. He is eating, sleeping, taking bath, and he is not concentrating. So that is why the impact has gone less. For that, uh, some teachers, what they do, they ask all the students to open their camera and show. By that, uh, they ensure that all are visible in, available in the class. Isn't it? So you can adopt your own way. Uh, some of uh, uh, I, in my earlier interaction, I gave quizzes and polls during my presentation. I, in other uh, uh, presentations also, I give that only to ensure that uh, all uh, are participating in my class. We can adopt various means. It is our creativity. Based on our creativity, we can do it. Yes. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Avinash Ji. You have been interacting very well. How about others? Thank you, sir. Praveen Ji. You are understanding everything. 
Yes, friends, any observations you have, you can interact with the nurses first. Any observation, last five minutes are there. Others can also open their camera. I would like to see Ucharani, Rajesh Kumar, others, Dipanjanji. Okay. We are conducting online counseling also, Beard. Agraji, sir. We are conducting online counseling also. Some of the Beard trainees are sitting at their schools and trying to learn. Uh, in such a case, learning will not be impactful. Wow. I hope all of you uh, like this presentation, learn quickly how to use technology. Was it useful for you? Are you all using technology? So they are using technology. They are, now they are not using at present. Camera charts no. This span of time only. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever they record, they use the technology. But this time they are not using technology. Camera drive 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 technology. technology. is useful or not? Yes, 100%. Actually, nowadays, if you see, uh, it's, everything is technology dependent. If you get uh, try to get rid of technology, then you will have to be out of the society and in any profession. Um, yeah, correct. And mostly education, if I talk about, it's completely technology driven, uh, be it resource or delivering uh, the knowledge. So everything is actually going through technology. Direct man-to-man -man interaction has become a kind of an absolute thing nowadays. So virtual yeah. platform is getting dominated. Dominated, yes. But we have to remember that uh, personal touch has to be there always because teacher uh, students require that personal part of the teacher. Uh, everybody likes that personal touch, personal part. So that is very much... And you can give them oral reinforcement. Yes, good, very good. You're right. Yeah, that has to be done. Yes, sir, that, that is Sundra. Nagarajan, sir, as you had given me time, so yeah. I'm uh, about to complete my time. Uh, I'll uh, oblige your orders. Uh, thank you, Vaya, for your wonderful lecture. Uh, today on, uh, how it will be helpful to the technology because uh, teaching learning material is only depends upon the technology and uh, how uh, when we are using technology we have to be keep in mind about the learner majorly because learner is important in the teaching process only uh, whether uh, the learner is not using uh, technology even teacher using technology also it is a null and void आप जीरो हो गए दीपंजन सक्सेस हो गया नो नो ये तो है सो दैट्स व्हाई इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिसर्च आल्सो हां जी इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिसर्च आल्सो नाउ इट इज ऑल द जर्नल्स आर एक्सेप्टिंग मोर रिसर्च व्हिच इज टेक्नोलॉजी ड्रिवन और इंस्ट्रूमेंट ड्रिवन रादर देन फिलोसोफी इफ यू ट्राई टू पब्लिश अ फिलोसोफी इट विल बी डिफिकल्ट Rather, if you uh, generate some data using technology and instrument, that will be easy to publish in, in sciences at least. Okay. So, anyhow, thank you, Bhaiya, for your presentation. Uh, your presentation was very good, and uh, we are uh, thankful to you on behalf of myself as well as the participants. Uh, I look thank forward you. for your support and uh, presence in further programs also, Bhaiya. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Today morning also I had a webinar and even we yeah. followed by that and uh, uh, participate in your program. Thanks, Sorry, for giving, both <laughs> uh, thanks for giving the opportunity. It was a, a blessing. Thank you. Thank you, Vajra. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. This YouTube channel provides 
educational, technological, research insights, motivational and organizational videos. To gain more insights and participate in the program, like, comment and subscribe the channel. See you soon.